This kills any impact wrench that we've ever tested. What is it? It's a torque gun from High Torque. We'll dig into the details in just a moment. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. You have impact wrenches and then you have torque guns or bolting guns or bolting solutions. And that's what these high torque units are. They're not impact wrenches. They're very precise bolting solutions made to set the torque on fasteners at extreme amount of torque. In fact, we're talking all the way up to 5,000 foot pounds right here on this table in this gun. Now, if you've been a part of our channel for very long, you've probably seen us use the high torque guns when we're setting the bolt, setting the torque uh, for our impact wrench test. And we use those because we can replicate those, uh, that amount of torque or we can increase that amount of torque that we need much quicker than resetting our torque wrench and setting that so these work much better for doing that. Now what we have up here, we have the, what they call their Lion gun or the Lion 25. We have the Lion 70 and then we have their Lithium series. Now these two run on 18 volt batteries and the Lion 25 goes from zero to 250 foot pounds and uh, the Lion 70 goes from, I'm sorry, I think this goes from like 25 foot pounds anyway, not zero, but 25 to 250. And then I believe this one goes from 25 or 50 all the way up to 700 foot pounds. Well, we started getting well beyond the 700 foot pounds for testing our impact wrenches. Needed something bigger, especially when we got to do the one inch. So we got the new Lithium Series. In fact, this is the Lithium Series 2 gun, and it's much different than the other high torque line guns that we've used before. Now I say much different, a lot of the concepts are the same, but there's a lot more technology in this lithium gun and quite frankly, it's a lot bigger gun and a lot heavier gun to handle. Now before I get into much more detail, let's actually dig in, take a closer look at these. I'll mention some similarities between the two, but then we'll really dive into the details of this. Then we'll take it over to our test bench and actually show you it in use and how it works and some of the features on it. Then we'll come back, wrap everything up with what we think of it. Okay, let's dive deeper into the Lithium Series 2 gun. As I mentioned, we've got uh, the other Lion Series guns here behind us as well. Uh, as we showed in the intro, this is the uh, Lion 25 that has a half inch anvil uh, and the Lion 70, which has a three quarter inch anvil. Now we've got the reactionary arm already on the 25. It's not on the 70. However, all these will require a reactionary arm unless we're using some of their uh, uh, specified uh, bolting solution sockets. And, and again, we'll get into that here in one moment as well. Now, before we dive into the gun, I wanted to make mention of their manuals that you get with this. I'm not going to uh, not going to get real geeked out on this, but I am pretty impressed with this. Now, most companies, when it comes to manuals and uh, literature, you know, they kind of check the box. It's typically folded up black and white. However, when you buy an expensive solution like this, uh, this is the way it should be. Nice, glossy uh, color pictures where it should be. Uh, very uh, easy to read, written very, very well. And again, great photos, great explanations uh, of the buttons and what they do. Anyway, just a, a, a great job on the literature and very large. This is full size magazine style um, literature. So glad to see that. And then even explanation of each one of the icons, because again, these things are used around the world. You see different languages right here. So just a quick, uh, you know, indicator guide of, of the different uh, little symbols and things that you'll see in the gun. And it just quickly explains what each one of them are. So great job on that. As well with the Lithium 2, we get a laminated calibration card. We, we tell people all the time, your torque wrench is only as good as the calibration it comes with. And if it doesn't come with a calibration, then throw away the torque wrench or something thereabouts. Same way with a torque gun. You're buying a very expensive uh, solution. Make sure that it's actually calibrated and it does what it says it does. So you see uh, we're well within the limits on each one of these. It gives specific uh, of what they are. So glad to see that in there as well. And then they just uh, include an awesome case with this, uh, as you saw in the intro as well. Now let's dive into this gun. So here we have the Lithium 2 Series gun. Now right away you'll see this big old chrome uh, extension off the front of this gun. There's no 
impact dogs in there. There's no weights that are slinging around at high speeds and uh, impacting with the anvil. This is sheer power and transmission going on in here. So there's a large transmission in here with planetary gears and basically that's reducing the, the speed of that electric brushless motor that's driving it and increasing the power output to that one inch anvil. Now you see the teeth here on this outside ring and it moves separately from the actual one inch anvil and we'll show you that here in just one moment. And you'll see the teeth here on the, what we call the reactionary arm or the actionary arm and those teeth obviously mesh with that ring right there. So once you slide it on, you tighten it with that Allen bolt or that hex bolt and tighten that down so it stays in place. And that's what's going to basically provide the leverage necessary that doesn't apply force like an impact wrench does to your hand. You get hardly any feedback on this. There is an auxiliary handle that you can put on either side, which we've got it over here. So this screws onto this side. Uh, you can also screw it over here on this side, but that's really only to help you hold the tool because it is a heavy tool. It's very front heavy as well. Uh, but again, there's no really actionary or there's no uh, force ag against you like an impact wrench gives uh, because this reactionary arm is actually taking the brunt of that or again in their specific um, uh, bolting sockets that does the same thing. So again, large transmission in here with planetary gears that's doing all the hard work necessary to drive those thousands of foot pounds and this reactionary arm keep that in mind as well whenever you're applying that force you've got equal and opposite reactions going on or equal and opposite actions going on if it's applying 3,000 foot pounds to that bolt or nut then it's applying 3,000 foot pounds to this actionary arm here obviously a little bit different due to the leverage off of the uh, off of the anvil but still regardless thousands of foot-pounds going on right there against that. Don't get pinched and uh, don't let that slip off. If you've seen us use these lion guns in the past, uh, then I just want to point out a couple of things. Number one, uh, the screen, not quite as nice here on the, on the lion gun as it is here on uh, the Lithium 2 series. But again, we're not playing a video game, so it's not like we're wanting too much uh, perfection here on our screen, but it is a lot nicer read and there's a lot more functionality here as well. But as far as the workings of it translates over, if you're used to using this, you can pick this up and use it quite quickly as well. Uh, and we also can go to a Bluetooth connection and connect with an app. Now, one thing really nice about uh, the new Lithium series is the fact that like on the Lion series, if I wanted to back up, so let me go ahead and log in here. So if I wanted to back up, so I pull the trigger and then I hit my button. And if I wanted to back up, I would have to hit this electronic switch here, then wait for that to engage. And then I could pull the trigger, push the button, and then it would back up. But it was kind of a, you know, I wouldn't say a tedious process, but a couple of, um, couple of pushes of buttons there to actually make that happen. Whereas on this one, we have a directional lever right here in the gun that when I hit that, you see it changes that to loosen. If I push it back over, it's on tighten. So you get that same uh, kind of um, uh, finger muscle memory that you have with an impact wrench or with a drill that you're typically used to or an impact driver. So you can easily slide that over and back uh, whether you're tightening or loosening. Also, these guns are relatively slow, especially when it comes to you know, running a nut down. So it's one thing if it's already tightened and then you're setting the torque, uh, that's no problem. You can deal with that with the speed, if you will. But if you've got you know, four inches to take up, it's gonna take a little bit because it just kind of crawls because again, it's applying a lot of force, but not a lot of speed. So you see about how fast that anvil is traveling. That would take a lot of time to run something down. Well, if you look under here, we have a switch that says torque and then run down. So that run down is going to allow me to do that much faster than when we're actually torquing it. So let me slide it back to torque. 
and it's back to loose and I must have slid it over so slide it back over and now we're back to torque and also we can set a release angle on this that's much the same as the line gun as well so in other words when we're applying say 2500 foot pounds of force on a fastener and we just you know complete the cycle well there's still 2500 foot pounds of force on that socket and reactionary arm i doubt you're going to be able to just pull that off so you set a release angle so it will actually once it gets to the 2500 foot pounds you keep your finger on the trigger it will back off five degrees allowing you to remove that in fact we probably need to up that uh, right here on the screen so you see very easy just to kind of cycle through here and i can go down and say uh, angle release angle hit the enter button and I can say, you know what, let's give eight degrees of release. Hit enter. And now we can go back to torque. And now we can set the torque or we can just run it. So now you see our release angle is eight degrees. Also for torque to yield fasteners, we can even set an angle on here. So rather than, you know, a thousand foot pounds, we may take it to 500 foot pounds and then, you know, 120 degrees of angle we can do that also where it will actually uh, add an additional amount of bolt stretch based off of angle rather than off of foot pounds of force. And then another difference is you see these 18 volt batteries are quite smaller than the 36 volt comparison, but there's a lot of similarities and we have the push button here battery gauge where we can actually see how much charge is left on these batteries. Now let's take this over and actually use it a little and show you how it works. We're over here on our test rig. This is where we typically uh, test uh, impact wrenches or bolting solutions, as you see here from high torque. But mainly we run impact wrench tests on here. Uh, and we'll torque these fasteners here. I believe uh, they're seven eighths in diameter and they'll, they'll allow up to about uh, 500 foot pounds of force. Sometimes we can push it past it, but many times when we go past that, it will uh, gall or strip the fastener. We'll have to replace them. But anyway, those only go up to, say, 500 foot-pounds. Well, the old, uh, the old, the other, the Lion guns, the Lion 70, uh, had no problem handling that. But as impact wrenches got stronger, as we started testing larger impact wrenches, like three-quarter inch and one-inch impacts, uh, we started needing to up the size of our, of our uh, fasteners, which now we've gone up to, I believe these are inch and a quarter or inch and a half uh, fasteners that are, able to withstand like 3,000 foot-pounds of force. Now we've got fasteners that can allow that amount of force to be applied to it, then we need a solution that can actually do it. And rather than going to a, uh, a multiplier uh, with a torque wrench, uh, we reached out to High Torque and got the Lithium Series 2, which can handle that all within the wrench itself, all within the, uh, the torque gun itself, which is just quite amazing. In fact, our first time in use with this, uh, shame on us for doing it, uh, but we really uh, wanted to get a test out and we were having trouble getting sockets. Anyway, long story short, we got our hands on a three quarter inch anvil socket. We thought, you know what, that'll probably hold up. Uh, and the, uh, the anvil on the, on the lithium two is a one inch. So we got an adapter and you see what happened to it. Now a torque or a, an impact wrench didn't do this the actual lithium-2 torque gun. We got footage of it. You'll probably see it here happening. Um, pretty scary situation, so make sure you're wearing your protective gear because this thing, even though it's not applying a lot of force against you, hardly any, it's uh, very unassuming the amount of force that's being applied to, again, the reactionary arm as well as the anvil socket and fastener itself. So it has the sheer power to just rip through a three quarter inch anvil. So there's a reason that that's a one inch anvil on this gun. We also use a pin and O-ring on the socket. So let me go ahead, put that on. And my pin should probably be a little bigger, but that's not where the force is applying. So we know that's just retaining it, holding it in place. That's not gonna be a problem. But now our, now our socket is not going to come off. It's going to stay on there. We also tightened up our reactionary arm, the little Allen wrench right there. So it's nice and locked on there also. And now you see kind of the, um, of how this whole reactionary arm works with the socket. In fact, if I pull the trigger here, you see this reactionary arm's not moving. 
even though I can turn it around like this, so I can apply it wherever I want, but the force is actually getting applied between these two things and not against the wrench itself. So that's why this has got to rest against uh, the, say, the, the fastener beside it or, uh, you know, some other type of um, st stable device to be able to withstand the amount of force that we're applying to the fastener. Okay, let's get started here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go, go into here, let's see if I can get you a good, good view of this. Uh, sometimes the glare makes it a little bit of trouble. Anyway, I'm going to come down and we'll start, let's start at 500 foot pounds. See, the longer I hold it, the faster it will go there. And as you hold it, it'll jump in tens rather than ones. It'll do the first 10 in uh, single digits. And then as you hold it, uh, it will start to go in 10. So 500 foot pounds. And again, depending upon uh, which way I have the slide switch, and you see it actually retains what I had it in loosen as well. So I've got in 500 foot pounds of torque and you can see the symbol here that tells me that's tightening. So let's go ahead. And now all I've got to do is pull the trigger. My reactionary arm's coming over. And now you'll see this, the socket starting to move. So that one must have already been tight. So in fact, let's go to loosen. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to tighten and let's do that 500 foot pounds. Oh, you see my arm start coming over, so actually I need to tuck that up under here. And so I'm going to stop prematurely. And you see it shows me a red light here. It also tells me it failed. Now let me go back to it. I'm going to hold the trigger down. And not only is it going to finish tightening, but you'll see it'll release that eight degrees that we set in it earlier as well. So you see it tightened, stopped. I never let off the trigger and then it backed off that eight degrees so that I can pull that off. Now let me actually go back into here and uh, let's go down and go to our release angle and I'm going to set that at zero. Enter. And I'm going to go back to torque and I'm going to take this up to a thousand foot pounds. So now we've got it set at a thousand foot pounds so let's do this next faster. In fact, I'll bring the reactionary arm up and we'll see this actually taking place here. So I'm going to pull the trigger and you'll see that reactionary arm come down and rest against that nut. Okay, so my finger is still in the trigger. It did not go into release. It's telling me success. Okay to release the trigger. I'm going to release the trigger. And I still, there's no way I'm getting that off because there's a thousand foot pounds of force against it. So I need to go into loosen. Now I can back that off. So that's why that re release angle is not necessarily critical, but will make your life a lot easier if you have that release angle built in. And if you have, you know, eight, 10 degrees of, of release angle. It's not like it's gonna loosen because it needs to use that reactionary arm. It's just gonna back that reactionary arm off of that fastener. Let me put that eight degrees back into it. And now we'll go back up to torque and let's take this on up. Gonna come out of loosen, there we go. And let's take this on up to 1500 foot pounds. Okay, so now we're at 1,500. So 
again we can watch that reactionary arm come down and you'll see also I'm going to go to one hand if I'm holding this with one hand So there's no force, there's no counter force going against this wrench. It's all happening between this arm and that socket. And let's go on up to 2000. 2000 foot pounds. Again, I'll hold this with one hand. Here's my other hand over here. Again, other hands over here, and it's applying that 2,000 foot pounds of force. And there we have it. So, the Lithium Series 2 gun is absolutely amazing in the amount of power that it can drive uh, just through a transmission and a, a brushless motor. Uh, it's just amazing. Uh, there's more, you know, bells and whistles with it. Uh, like, here's the app. Uh, for the high torque, it's uh, you see it's connected. It tells me the uh, the model and the serial number, uh, and uh, I can go to basic bolting. You see it's already reading my 2,000 foot pounds, so I can put in the uh, the foot pounds, uh, the degrees uh, of release angle. I can even set a job profile or set a job ID. Um, use a barcode. So really cool app settings. Again, I don't want to get too deep into this, but we do have the ability to not only track the tool. Uh, to also be able to, you know, utilize the data uh, that is within this and be able to, you know, track those uh, tightening sequences and how much force has been applied and so forth. As you can see, this thing had the sheer power just to snap the three-quarter inch adapter that we were using uh, for using our impact wrenches before we got our one-inch socket in the correct size. So that tells you of the amount of force this thing can put out. Now, quite frankly, you may be able to take an impact wrench that so-called puts out, you know, the uh, 2,500 foot-pounds of force or 3,000 foot-pounds of force that we were using that broke this, and it may last. And why is that? Why would this last on an impact wrench that's putting out 2,500 foot-pounds of force when this wouldn't, you know, when it wouldn't last with the, with the high torque at 2,500 or 3,000 foot-pounds of force? Well, that's because this is constantly and consistently applying that torque. It's not using the impact method. It's actually applying that force constantly. So you can think of it like this. If you took a bulldozer and you applied, you know, 5,000 pounds of force on a house, it'd probably push the house over. However, if you took a ball peen hammer that maybe weighs 10 ounces, you can probably apply 5,000 foot pounds of force, but on an area that's probably the size of a, an eraser of a pencil and just for a split second. That's kind of that same technology that an impact wrench uses. It may be applying that much torque, but it's very sudden and very instant. And so this impact socket adapter may be able to take that for just an instant, but it's not going to take it constantly and consistently. So hopefully I didn't muddy the waters too much, but just wanted to show that this thing is actually applying that force constantly, not just a sudden impact for a sudden split second. Now these are very precise guns, especially the Lithium Series 2. It has all kind of bells and whistles that we haven't gotten into. In fact, we'll have a second video. I believe we mentioned that as well, where we'll, we will dig into more of the app features, more of the abilities of it to communicate, doing job sheets, uh, different jobs, different users, that sorts of thing. All that is built right into here, into this system. High Torque is actually known in more than 100 countries around the world, so they understand the technology in more than just here in the U.S. However, world headquarters are right here in the U.S. in New Jersey. Now, when you look at a bolting system like this or a solution like this, many times, especially in the past, you're thinking nuclear energy, you know, food distribution, you know, stainless piping, uh, things like that where there are many critical fasteners that, you know, we have to have details on when it was done, how much, you know, how much force was applied to it, all those types of things where we have those checks and balances, maybe even aviation. However, we're getting there in the transportation industry as well, 
where they're using more and more of solutions like from high torque because you have a couple of reasons. Number one, just the safety aspect of it, of knowing that each one of the bolts are had the torque applied that they're supposed to, whether it's the 450 foot pounds, 500 foot pounds, uh, what have you. Also, you're getting into liability. So the insurance companies more and more are getting involved. You don't want a wheel coming in off a bus at you know, 70 miles an hour going down the interstate. You put those people on the bus at risk. You put the people around it at risk, wherever that tire is going at risk. So again, that liability is driving solutions like this as well. And then that same liability that can cause a lot of legal issues as well. That's also driving uh, more of these larger transportation industry experts into looking at solutions like this, where there's a lot more traceability, where they can confirm, no, this was applied correctly. Here's the bolting sequence. Here's the time it was done. And by the way, here's our log sheets on this, you know, this vehicle or this piece of equipment, what have you. So many, many different uses for these bolting technologies, not just on very sophisticated stuff, but also on things we see every day. Hey, check it out from hightorque.com. It's H-Y-T-O-R-C. We'll have a link in the description. They have many different solutions, even hydraulic uh, torque guns or hydraulic tor uh, bolting solutions, as well as, as we see here, cordless solutions also. Also, be sure to keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And hey, if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.